Hey guys, Darren here. Thanks for joining the Stock Option Market Weekly Update for the week of December 25th, 2023. Merry Christmas to all as well. We're going to look at where we are in the S&P year to date, actually where we're finishing up the year, and what uh, we're going to look at what's looking forward ahead for us in the S&P and the market. And then we're going to jump into what we have on the economic calendar last week and going forward next week, as well as what happened in the different sectors uh, this last year in 2023, and then we'll jump into the trades on the option trading platform. I think it's super important that we understand the different tools and strategies that the rich are using to get richer so that we can use those same strategies and profit safely in any market. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and gets the video out to more people, and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Also, be sure and download the free options workshop in the link below. It talks about the two main benefits of trading options over buying stocks outright. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner and I'm not recommending trades. Please do your own research. And if you're new or learning, I recommend you start small. All right, guys, if we look at where we are in the S&P uh, for the week, we started at 4604. And we uh, are up just under 1% at 4754 uh, is where we ended the week on Friday. And we are now up around 19.5% uh, year to date. Uh, if we look at where we started at 38.24 and up to 47.54 now. So up big this year, almost 20%. The forward PE is close to 20 now. So it's above the 10 year average of 17 and a half. And looking at the economic calendar last week, uh, we had the PCE numbers that came out um, on Friday and they were below uh, what was expected. So that is showing that inflation is uh, getting more in check and that is good for the market. Next week with Christmas uh, Monday, it's going to be a slower week. Uh, so there's no major economic announcements next week. If we move on to the uh, CME Fed Watch tool um, with inflation in check, it looks like uh, the Fed will cut rates. They're going to still stay in January. Uh, this is the expectation on the uh, CME Fed Watch tool website. And there's an 85% chance that it's going to stay where it is now uh, in January <clears throat> at five and a quarter <clears throat> to five and a half. But in March, it looks like they could possibly cut rates down to the a quarter point down to the five to five and a quarter. I'm not sure they are going to do that, but it looks like 75% chance. So most people do think that they will. And then uh, continued cuts in uh, May and throughout the rest of the year. So uh, that would be great uh, for the stock market and uh, really lead a bull market, I think, uh, for 2024. If we look at the different sectors and how they performed last week, um, we <clears throat> see that communication services were up big at uh, two and a quarter percent. And then we had a, a little jump as well in energy uh, up almost 1%, 0.8. And then year to date, we uh, still see the communication services, consumer discretionary and tech leading the way uh, throughout the year. So with that, let's uh, jump into the trades right away. And the first one that we have on, well, let's look um, before we get into uh, Adobe, we did an uh, Accenture ticker symbol, ticker symbol ACN last week. Had a good trade. We did a video on that, so if you didn't check that out, check that out. But uh, you can see um, we made four hundred fifty-three dollars in just one day. So uh, we put on a couple of tranches of iron condors, and it stayed within the range. And then we closed out. Uh, so we collected five uh, fifty, and then we closed out for fifty-one and forty-six dollars. So $97 and we made $453. So I did a complete video on that uh, and the reasons why we placed that trade and it worked out for us, which is great. Uh, <clears throat> moving on to Adobe, it's up at 598 uh, and it was uh, at 584 last week. 
they had earnings that came out and they beat on both the top and bottom bottom line. I actually did a video on this one as well, uh, but they guided lower. So the stock did drop, drop pretty big at one point. And what I did was I closed out the call side and just kept on the put side. So you can see just during these trades, I did a lot of finagling, but uh, you can see we're, we're up $221 uh, on that trade. But I'm big in Adobe and uh, <clears throat> the lower guidance is something that their management, quite frankly, does quite often. And it's actually smart. They, they don't want to raise expectations and make it difficult to beat next quarter. So uh, <clears throat> even though they beat, they guided lower and the stock dropped. So I'm still long Adobe, definitely. And there's $987 in extrinsic here that we can just we can collect in the next 27 days. If you look at the curve mode, and, well, let's go to the right cycle and curve analysis. And then you can see we're profitable all the way down to just under 580. We're at 598. And then anywhere in this green ra range above our uh, last short strike, it looks like 585, we collect the full $1,324 um, <clears throat> for the less, r rest of this trade. Um, don't know why that doesn't match with the 987. I think it, 987 is probably correct. But uh, it can be a big winner for us, and uh, I think it will be. Um, Adobe's a, a good company, and it's already had a big drop. So one of the things that I like to do, if there's a good company and it has a big drop, for that reason, for the reason that it dropped, it probably won't drop anymore over the next 30 days. So I look to keep the trade on, roll it to the next month. Um, actually, that's what we did. We're in the 27th. Yeah, we had some shorter term expirations and then we just rolled the puts and i didn't put on the calls again because i'm bullish on adobe now but i don't think it can drop too much more because it's already baked in the news came out and uh i think the the risk is i, I think it's gonna it's to the upside and i think it's gonna do well so um, i like doing after earnings trades as well uh amd is trading in that range we've got uh iron condors on i put on a second tranche uh, last week but just in the last 30 days, we've made $294. In the last 180 days, we've made 840. So we continue to, to make money in AMD. It is trading within a range. You can see it's right in the middle of our range right now. And we've got 27 days to expiration. And we've got another $432 in extrinsic that we can uh, uh, collect for AMD. The chart for AMD, <coughs> the it's up but it's still you know under my uh long-term target and it's been trading with a range within a range uh recently um bank of america the bank stocks are, are starting to take hold and come back right now it's uh trading at 33 dollars and uh ivr is 24 it stayed about the same but we continue to make money on the uh on selling the calls against the leaps option so it's a poor man's covered call and yeah, just in the last 30 days, we've made $240. So they're finally starting to come back. We had been down in the banks prior to that. Um, but I think they're going to do really well moving ahead. Chewy is one where uh, it's been moving up quite a bit. Twenty, It's up at $24. Moved up big last week. Um, just in the last... 30 days, we've made $100, a lot of finagling around. So even though it moved up against us, I sold my, it moved past my call. My, I had a 22 and a half call. And I actually did a video and showed how I rolled after earnings to the January options. I sold a call against it. And now I had to close that out and I sold another one out a little further to allow for that range so now we're in between that range we're up and i think we're in a good position we're profitable down to 19 and a half all the way up to 29 and a half so we have a huge range in chewy to uh, continue to make profits and i'm long chewy uh going forward i've got a long-term target of like 34 35 dollars for chewy uh, but i do believe that it, you know it's not going to move up all at once it's going to take time but over the next year i think they should do well now, Costco was an earnings trade, 
it <clears throat> uh, had a big jump. You can see it just went parabolic. It went straight up. Whenever this happens and I have an earnings trade on, I uh, sell. I So I had an iron condor on and did a video on it. You can check it out. But I closed out my puts and I doubled down on the call. So right now I've got $937 in intrinsic that we can collect as long as it doesn't move up past this 685. We're at 671 right now and I'm playing Costco to the downside. When I find that a stock moves up that high, at some point it's got to come down. I think long term it's going to go up, but it, I think it's just too high right now. Although we do have Christmas and that's probably why it's uh, high. They're going to probably have good numbers coming out people suspect but again uh, I got hurt a little bit on the earnings trade so I wanted to roll out and stay short uh, Costco right now on the call side after it's already moved up that big I don't think it can you know it's not gonna skyrocket up any you know too much further I think the risk uh, is to the downside I think it's gonna move down and uh, this will capitalize on it and we can collect some premium uh, if it does. If it doesn't, it's not going to move up too far past this. Uh, if that does happen, I'll close all these out and maybe open one or I'll probably open at least a couple more. And I'll do the call side again and throw it further out uh, in time. Um, the next monthly option chain. DraftKings is next. I love DraftKings. Uh, online gambling as more states become... Uh, uh, legalized the online gambling. DraftKings will continue to benefit from that. I've got leaps options and calls that I've sold against it, closed and sold, closed and sold as it continues to move up. Uh, if we look at, you know, the DraftKings, what we've done in the last 30 days, 243. And I think over the, let's see what we did for the year, the last year, you know, $1,800 uh, in DraftKings. And that's just on the option side. So We've also had appreciation in the leaps as well, as you can see here. So we've made a lot of money in uh, DraftKings uh, and we'll continue to do that uh, moving forward. I've got a $50 target and they're at 35, but again, it's not gonna move up all at once and it's gonna trade within ranges. Uh, FedEx is the next one. <clears throat> this one uh, was a earnings loser for us, uh, <clears throat> one of the three. And I've got a video that I'm uh, coming out with. Look for that uh, in the next day or two, but that will be coming out. And it's going to talk about how I am making these earnings trades, uh, either closing out the winners and then the losers. I'm uh, rolling to the next month and we're going to be profitable next month. I'm confident. And uh, we've got now Iron Condors on uh, two sets and then I've got an extra put because it did move down after earnings. Um, if we look, you know, e even with it with missing in the last 30 days, yeah, it's not good. We got to make some money back. But uh, we've got $759 in extrinsic that as long as we stay within this 245 to 265 range, we will make that money back and we will be profitable on this trade within one month where we lost money initially after earnings. Um, and again, I've got a video that's uh, covering uh, this. They missed earnings and it dropped uh, down uh, quite a bit and it was due to their express unit. And uh, I talk about the reasons why I don't see that as too much of a concern moving forward. Uh, Lennar is another one that we've still got on from earnings that we rolled out. Um, it just didn't come in. We didn't miss on uh, Lennar, but uh, we didn't do the, the closest <coughs> expiration. So I did January so that I could go a little bit wider and it's, it's working so far. It just needs time to come in. But we've got you know six hundred ninety four dollars that we can collect as long as it stays within this range. It's already had earnings. Uh, they were good. Uh, <clears throat> they beat on both the top, top and bottom line. So I don't think they're going to drop too much further. A lot of people aren't selling homes yet. Um, but interest rates, you know, they're expected to be cut next year. Um, and we'll see how the, uh, the home builders continue to do. But I think that they're going to trade within this range. And that's what I'm betting on. Um, if you've got any of these earnings trades on, let me know in the comments below. Uh, what you've done and what you think going forward. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, let's share it with uh, the people that are watching this video. Uh, 
Lockheed Martin is another one. Actually, before I get to Lockheed, uh, L3, LHX was one that I had on and I closed out just because it was up on Friday. But if we look at L3, <coughs> just in the last 30 days, we've made $510. I think they're a great defense stock uh, company and they're at 208. I still have a higher target, 240 for uh, L3, but because we made that money quickly and there wasn't a lot of intrins extrinsic left, I thought I would close out and then uh, wait for a pullback uh, in L3. And I left Lockheed on. It's done pretty well. It's another defense stock, so they trade very similarly. Um, and uh, yeah, we're so so we still have it extrinsic. We're not up nearly uh, as much or at all. We're flat in Lockheed Martin, but I think Lockheed will continue to do well. So I'm long both those, and I'm waiting for a pullback, and I'll throw on L3 again. Lulu uh, has been pretty good trading within a, a range. They um, did really well on uh, iron. I did an iron condor for earnings. And we've made some money um, last 30 days, $650. Um, and then I just moved on. And because IVR was still high, and again, I like those after earnings trades, uh, but it did move up quite a bit. So I've got one extra tranche of call spreads on against um, the one set uh, of the put, the 460, 450 put spread and the 540, 550 call spread. So as long as it stays within that range where we are, um, we're good. And again, it had a big parabolic move, huge move up. So that's why I'm a little bit short. Um, but again, with Christmas, I think uh, it should continue to do good. But keep in mind that consumer discretionary is still way up. Um, so, uh, you know, I just think the risk uh, to the upside is minimal and uh, it's more to the downside. And that's why I'm a little bit uh, short. You can see I've got 14 negative delta, beta weighted deltas on a Lulu. So that uh, shows that uh, I'm a little bit short Lulu. Palantir is, uh, I actually sold off one of the calls. It was down last week. It trades between that, you know, 16 to 20 up to 19 range. Uh, I've got the leaps options. We've done really well in Palantir. I think it's going to do great next year as well. Throughout the year, I'm going to continue to watch it and trade it. Um, just in the 30 day, you know, we've made $560 in the last 30 days, and uh, <clears throat> that is on the options alone and not necessarily the uh, the stock. Um, but the stock we've made money as well, and we've got three leaps on uh, over a year out. <clears throat> and then I sold one of the calls. I'll look to put that on on any down move. Throw another uh, call on. Um, or any up move, uh, up move, I will put a call on a down move. Um, I will probably, I, I could buy another, uh, tranche, another, uh, leaps option. So that's Palantir. SoFi, uh, was up big last week. It's up near 10. Um, I sold a little bit of it, but we are up pretty big now. And we were just down a couple of weeks ago, but we've made $1,200 in the last 30 days in SoFi. And I think, you know, this could be a $20 stock. It could double next year. So I'm going to continue to do the leaps options and the covered calls when it gets a little bit at the higher end of the range and continue to trade it the way we're trading it. Uh, but I love SoFi going forward. SQQ Q is the, um, that is my hedge right now. Um, I didn't trade SPX too much last week just because we were in such a bull market. Um, <clears throat> I stayed away from that, but you can see this is down at 13 and a half. <laughs> My cost basis for those 300 shares is 16 and a half. So I'm down, uh, you know, $800, but that's okay. If we have a big drop in the market, this will move up. I don't have a lot of money short um, it, but um, any, big down move in the market in the NASDAQ and this will hedge it and it'll move up. So I just keep those on kind of as insurance. Uh, TDOC, Teladoc um, Health has done well for us um, as well. Let's see, over the last three, 360, over the last year we made $881. 
and uh, we've been long the leaps uh, we bought leaps and then we've sold calls against them and it's, it's trading within that range. So, uh, well, that doesn't show us too well. Uh, Verizon dividend stock on a hundred shares, small, but, uh, um, with interest rates, uh, coming down, I think tech should do well, but I like Verizon long-term for the dividend, high dividend. I think it's a 7% dividend. So, uh, I think Verizon will always continue to do well for uh, the foreseeable future. Wells Fargo, as I mentioned, the banks I think are coming back now. So I've got B of A now and Wells Fargo, and I'm doing leaps options and selling calls against them uh, when they do move up. I've got a 52 and a half call on now in Wells. Um, again, <clears throat> got kind of hurt on the banks, but actually in Wells, we're up $319. So uh, for the year. So not too bad. Um, and then Exxon Mobil is the last one, uh, oil stock, and they are a great company. Um, they haven't been, uh, doing too well with oil now being down, but, uh, definitely long oil and Exxon Mobil is a good one. Anytime there's a drop, I'm going to look to get long. I've just got to put credit spread against Exxon Mobil. It's at 101 about where it was last week. So it was pretty flat. And, uh, that is it for the um, trades that we have on. As far as earnings next week, there is really not much at all with uh, the Christmas holiday. You know, they don't have any listed. So um, that's it. All right, guys, I put a link down below for that free options workshop. Be sure and grab that. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you're trading. Any questions that you have, I answer everyone. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.